Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. I hope today finds you blessed, excited about growing the gift that is on the inside of you. And we've spent a couple of weeks really um, talking about maximizing our leadership gift through time management and delegation. And I want to jump right in here with a couple of principles on the subject of delegation that I believe will be a blessing as you kind of set forth a pattern and a system for how you activate the gifts of others, how you give away uh, things that enable you then to take other things uh, on as a part of your leadership. And in turn, the entire organization is blessed because you've learned some important skills. And let me add a couple of principles in today's podcast. The first is this. When it comes to delegation, you have to resist the temptation to only give away the things you do not enjoy. I got some people in my organization that are great at giving stuff away because what they give away is all the stuff they don't want to do. That's not the the true spirit of what I'm uh, trying to drive at in these uh, podcasts. Giving away Uh, what you love, can I just say, is a whole lot harder than giving away things that you despise. And although we teach that there are really no little tasks in the kingdom of God, that nothing is beneath us, uh, we teach this, but we all have those things that we just don't love doing. They're not in the center of our wheelhouse. Um, They tax us in ways that the things we enjoy don't. We just don't enjoy uh, doing those things. Well, those become, right, the things that we give away. And let 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 me reposition this for you. Think of it this way. What you give away can represent how you feel about the person you gave it away to. Can I just leave that there with you? What you're giving away can often reveal what it is you feel about the people you're giving it away to. And when you don't give away things of great importance, can I tell you that that's kind of a revelation of the way you feel about the people you've given that to. So I want, I want, I want to wake you up on some of this. Most of the things we don't like that we give away are the things that are out of sight and out of the spotlight. And because of that, they're not equally valued. But listen to this. Let me just, boy, this right here is going to bless you because it's opened up so much for me. The heart of delegation must center on the development of the gift of others, not the urge to unload the tasks you don't want to do. If that's what you get out of delegation, man, the opportunity to not do anything I don't like, you're not in the center of the spirit of what I'm trying to get out here. The heart of And the center of delegation must be the development of the gift of others. Listen to this. Jesus prepared his disciples for the little and the big. And he willingly gave both away. When we're only willing to give away the menial and elementary task, we aren't valuing and developing the gift of others. We're seeking to get out of doing what we don't enjoy. This won't bear the same fruit of what I'm talking about. Promotion, a lot of us talk about promotion and the desire to be promoted, to do more. But can I say this? If you're leading right now, promotion is hidden in delegation. God will not and cannot give you more until you become willing to give it away. And when you work yourself out of a job because you've raised up others that can do what you do, only then do the doors of opportunity open for you to receive more and to do more. Down's always up in the kingdom. And so when we kneel in service to others, when we prioritize seeing them win and seeing them succeed, only then are we positioned for promotion. So I want to download the big thought. Okay. Maybe you've been waiting. Maybe you haven't, but let me give you the big thought. The one I 
the one I really started to sow several weeks ago. And here's the thought for leadership. We must train until we trust. If delegation is my way up, if delegation is the way I maximize and multiply my leadership gift, and not, I'm not giving it away because I don't trust, then here's the principle. I must learn to train until I trust. When trust is the issue, training is the remedy. When trust is the issue, training is the remedy. And there's three levels of this process I want to talk through. The number, the first one is teaching. The nature of teaching is the dispersion of knowledge. Teaching is the telling, right? Teaching is telling. Teaching is releasing the knowledge necessary to prepare someone for a certain task. And this is the first chapter in our preparing others for service. Do you have opportunities where you, you do the telling, right? Where we tell people what to do. We tell people how to do it. We tell people the spirit with which we want it done from A to Z. This is the spell out. Do you create opportunities where you can say, I have fully downloaded into the life of someone else? Because this first domino is really very, very important. And can I say this also? We never leave the teaching phase. It's just like your children. You don't fix your kids or get them to do something over a long period of time by telling them one time. At least I, that has not been my experience. I'm always in the teaching and telling phase. But then we've got to move to the second piece of it, which is training. Training is the dispersion of wisdom, which is how to use knowledge. We can tell people what to do, but I believe showing them how to do it becomes that next step of the process. And training involves taking what was taught and giving them an opportunity to apply it in a situation that's maybe a little less impact or a place where they're protected, right? Where they can fail and it be okay. Because I can tell you this, you can read about how to fix a lawnmower. Somebody can tell you how to fix a lawnmower, but until you put your hands on a lawnmower, you're not going to be able to fix a lawnmower. And too often we consider somebody prepared because we told them what to do. Can I tell you until... Um, you have moved to the process of training. Your people are not prepared. Without internship or mentorship that puts what they've learned into action in a controlled environment, they're not ready. And then when they fail, we look at them like they're bad people. And the reality is the problem here was a leadership one. We didn't come alongside. We didn't partner with them. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Even Jesus had one of the 12 not make it. So if you have people that just don't make it um, and you did everything you could do, I believe Jesus put everything into Judas. He put into Peter and he put in uh, to the rest of the disciples that made it, that became martyrs for the cause in case of Christ. Judas didn't make it. So it, it gives me a little hope that everybody that I try to delegate to won't, won't make it. But if I'll do the right thing in the telling or the teaching, and then I'll do the right thing in the training, which is the internship and the mentorship in a controlled environment, I will position people to succeed more often than not. So we have teaching as the first phase, training as the next phase, and the third phase is the empowerment or empowering stage. This is that delegation stage where you give it away and release others and empower them to bear fruit. And don't think of, of it as giving away a job. It's giving away authority, and that's different. You have to prepare people for what walking in new authority looks like. Uh, certainly there's the job that needs to be done, but standing in the right authority will make sure that it gets done the right way. And you see this in the process clearly in the ministry of Christ with his disciples. His heart was not just to tell them how. 
He wanted to show them in real application and then at the next phase, empower and release them to do what he did and in his own words, even greater things than he did. What if we trained others with the idea in mind that they would go on and do it greater than we did it? How would that charge you to prepare them? I don't think we're preparing people the right way. And so when we do give jobs away and they fall down, you know, it teaches us a lesson that I don't think we need to learn. And that is, mm, we shouldn't give it away because when we do, it doesn't work and people don't do what they're told and blah, blah, blah. What if you trained people with the idea that they would step into your shoes and do it greater than you've ever done it? That was the motive of Christ's ministry in the life of his disciples that they would go forth and do greater things. I wonder in our ministries, are we set up to prepare people to do it better than we've ever done it? Are we training them, teaching them, training them, and empowering them in a system that truly prepares them for the assignment that God would have on their life? I would, I would challenge you to look in your own leadership and see the places where there's holes in the system of teaching, training, and empowering. I certainly am looking over our situation in our ministry, and I am, I've never been more motivated or convicted to prepare people for the call of God in their life, to activate that gift and to do it with the Spirit that they'll go on and do it greater and with greater fruit and greater productivity than I have done it. I know that's the heart I have with my children. I wonder if it's a heart that I, that I can have for everybody in my organization. I hope this helps you. I'll see you right back here next time on Culture Keys.